I think there needs to be more adult pop up books. In my <laughs> <laughs> you should send the whole display. You should send, send like a box display. Be, I, I would take a look at that. If there was actually an adult pop up book, I would. I say, okay, I have to see what this like, is. Like, who is this? The Riddler? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all kinds of all kinds of newspaper cut out letters and stuff. What is going on? That would like, this is my first three-way. Um, I do appreciate it. It's, it's mine too. Mine too. Hey, Same. awesome. Same. Oh no! I knocked over my microphone. Oh my god. <laughs> So, too bad this too bad this is all live and people are watching around the world. Oh goodness. <laughs> Today on the Uniweb interview show, I'm joined by Donald Chambers and Sheree Stewart. <laughs> That's straight. You got actors, it. Actors, filmmakers, podcasters. Thank you both so much for joining me. This is my first three-way. Um, I do appreciate it. It's it, it, mine too. Mine too. Hey, Same. awesome. Same. What's that? What's that? Uh, Justin Timberlake song? <laughs> and, uh, no, it's the Lonely Island Boys. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. With- <laughs> yes. <laughs> I won't repeat it. But anyway, so how are we doing today? What's going on with you? We're good. We're good. good. Glad to be. Good. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank- talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, so let's start with the, the TCAT podcast because that's that's the first introduction I had to both of you. Um, Donald, you contacted me on Twitter uh, from TCAD podcast. What is what is TCAD all about? Well, uh, TCAD, uh, TCAD, it stands for uh, Theatrical Conjecture and Dissertation, a fancy name for an unfancy show. And the name is really, it, 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 it's a nonsense name. It, it doesn't mean anything. I, I, I love just nonsense. Some, I love yeah, exactly. I, I just put some fancy words and, and mashed it together. But yeah. I did it because um, I, I wanted to make fun of, of um, the movie reviews that we see that are really serious, that get really deep over yeah. movies. I mean, we're, we're, we're simply watching, you know, celluloid film fly past our eyes at 24 frames a second and for right. two hours. And, and that's it. You know, it, it's not more than that. So I right. wanted to make fun of that. And, and what it is, <laughs> just... My opinions, as well as Ms. Stewart's opinions, and we kind of give a more, uh, almost like a layman's sort of uh, a vibe and, and, a, and a feel to how we review films. Like for me, I'm probably far more emotional. And sure. when I, my, my reviews are simply like, hey, if I sat down there, I paid my good money for the ticket, I paid my good money for some popcorn and a drink. Uh-huh. And am I sitting here and is this movie, you know, kicking ass to me? And did I have a great time when I left here? And that's sort of how I present the the review, because for me to get any deeper into it, then really becomes so subjective. Because So is, you know, is Sheree, right. is, are you are you bringing the logic in and uh, keeping keeping him even keeled when he gets uh, very <laughs> livid, when he gets- livid about these? These people in their movies? <laughs> well, in the movie reviews, he's much more emotional. When we start talking about other stuff, it's it's all me with my the rants that I have. But, you know, even our, our review system isn't. We don't have stars. We don't have thumbs up. We don't have... We have, will I go pay full price Friday night opening weekend with snacks and everything? Is okay. this a movie that's worth going to see as a matinee? Is this a movie that's worth it at the Dollar Theater? Is this a wait for Redbox? Is this a wait for Netflix? <laughs> is this the wait for basic cable? Is this I'm not even going to waste my time on the treadmill in the gym. Like go. that's exactly. our lowest that's rating. It's like if you're going to pick Law and Order SVU reruns over this movie at the gym, that's a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. Have you so in the ranking system, how many have you all ranked that poorly? <laughs> Do you have some on there that you've ranked like I'm not watching this crap in the gym? <laughs> I haven't. Don, you did. What was it? Was it was oh, it a Predator it was, movie? Uh, oh yes, it was. Oh, the <laughs> Predator. I, I thought was just pure hot garbage. Yeah. I okay. hate it. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. That's interesting though, because that that was the that was the sentiment from a lot of people. It was like 
it's just pure entertainment, right? For some and for others, it's like this is the cheesiest, stupidest garbage I've ever seen in my entire life. How could they put this thing out? But at the same time, Donald, <laughs> you, Don, you are saying <laughs> that yeah, yeah. when people get too deep into the movie, is it just about entertainment, or is it about what is there? Are they trying to get a message across? So uh, I, 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 I see where you're going. I okay, you're going. <laughs> I want to hear. I, some. I, I said in my review though that I thought this was hot garbage, only <laughs> mainly because this movie just had it had so. It had so much potential to to maybe expand on the Predator universe and at least yeah. least be exciting. I didn't even okay. find it exciting. Yeah, I thought the characters were like so cliched and boring yeah. that I, I'm, I I I sat there in this movie and there were times where I'm just like I could probably leave. But Don's biggest biggest movie sin <laughs> is being bored. Like that's the biggest sin a movie can make yeah. is being bored. Bored. Yeah, oh. I'm no, I'm the same way. I completely understand that being bored thing because, especially if a movie spends a hundred million dollars to do the exact same thing that somebody else has done multiple times, like if you're, especially if you're going to take a franchise like Predator, like and and like you said, I guess it didn't build on anything on the potential that it had. That can be more frustrating than anything else. You're just like you feel you literally feel like you're sitting there wasting time. Yeah. Really, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I knew it was. I, I, I don't mind if if it decided to go, you know, cheesy over the top. I, I wouldn't have mind if it maybe for whatever reason it wanted to get serious. I mean, it could have gone in any kind of direction. I would have been like, all right, as long as you commit to it, let's do it. But you yeah. can't bore me. I think yeah. Halloween. You you had you 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 were upset about that one too. The new yeah. Halloween. Well, and, I want to I want to ask though, Stray, what did you like about Predator? What was it about Predator that you that you were like, what is your what's your problem, Don? Okay, so <laughs> no, no. See, my biggest <laughs> here's my thing is um that this is actually my my new column that we're, that I'm gonna start is um it's called I didn't hate it, but <laughs> and so for me it was it was fine because you know there were some really solid performances that I that I liked like I loved Sterling K Brown in it I thought he was really good he just didn't have anything to do um you know and that was kind of unforgivable I, th I thought the the set pieces were really cool the new predator costuming was really cool like, like I like seeing things that I've never seen before in terms of you know because I make stuff and I do prop and I you know I'm I'm into the part of movies and so if I see something I've never seen before I'm automatically not gonna hate the movie um I do really, really wish that that you know Arnold had showed up in the end like they had wanted. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm here for cheese. Like I, I love nonsense, probably more than Don. Um, I'm 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 into nonsense. That's and why you so retweet some of my tweets. I think <laughs> <laughs> because they're I'm, utter nonsense. I'm here for nonsense. Like I'm definitely <laughs> I'm here for it. Like I in our group of friends, I'm. The straight man usually. Um, I have kind of a, I keep a straight face. I keep like you know everybody thinks I'm stoic, but I'm 100% here for nonsense, the absolute yeah. utter nonsensical nonsense, and it comes out of left field for sometimes. You know, I'm surprisingly absurd is what, <laughs> what I that, think. That's the best way to do it. That's the, the, the farthest, the farthest reach from it is like that's where it gets the biggest laugh. They're just like, what the hell? The biggest I shock. like being surprised into laughter. I love yeah. that. Well, I think that's the, the same thing with movies, right? Like if you go into a thing, you go into a movie with an expectation that's up here, and it hits like around here, you're you're just gonna be like, I hated that movie. But so, you know, so I think they build they build up, especially with like Predator and these things with these big budgets. It builds it up so much, and it builds up our expectations to where we're like, "This is gonna be the greatest movie I've ever seen," and then it ends up being just a a movie. It's a yeah. it's a watchable film. But I think you touched on something, Shrey, that was big. Like when they give these big time actors, um, or fan, just not even big time, but like really good actors, crap roles that they can't explore, like characters they can't. I think that's one of the biggest movie sins that that gets me ticked off personally. It's like. What are you doing paying this person all this money and putting them in the movie to have them act, you know, not do anything? Wasting their time, wasting our time. 
getting us hyped yeah. for it, and then they're just they have nothing to do. Yeah, there's no character development or anything like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so the next movie was would you say um, that uh, he hated Halloween? Halloween? Was a, <laughs> yeah, the newer the new Halloween. Don hated that one. So I haven't seen that one. Oh, Alita Battle Angel. That oh movie. yeah, you hated that. Really, that's gotten such great reviews. What's the deal? And you know what you know what it was. And I, I fully admitted. I even said on the podcast. I said, listen, I don't know the full you know history behind it. I know it it comes from a manga, so I, I'm sure there's more uh, depth to the canon of Alita Battle Angel. But yeah. What they showed me on the screen, uh-huh. I watched and, and I and I told Shrem sure, like there was so many threads that they started with. I thought could lead to very interesting things that they just would mention it and they left it and moved on. And I was like, Oh, okay. I guess we're not going to find out about this or we're not going to explore that. And they had these supposed incredible, you know, battle uh, action sequences that I watched that just didn't, they didn't thrill me. I mean, it was a lot of CGI, which CGI doesn't bother me because it was good CGI. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't what? Matrix Two CGI. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matrix Reloaded. We're, we're past. We're past that. It really wasn't that. that. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but nothing that happened in the story, like to me, I was like, this to me turned out to be a movie about like rollerball, and and that was it. I mean, we didn't get to go to the flying city in the sky. I didn't see what it was. We only saw the the bad guy that one time at the very end, and I'm like. Is is this it? And they set it up for sequels that may or may not happen, and didn't okay, give man. enough information for a, 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 if it happened to be a standalone movie. So we were left with a lot of threads and a lot of open things hanging, and there were things that they tried to force into the movie that didn't make sense. We talked about that the rollerball sequence. They they had this whole elaborate plan to murder her during the tournament, but she didn't matter enough for them to set that up. They could have just killed her in the street. Like, it didn't matter. Like, they didn't have to set up this huge, elaborate sham to kill her when she didn't matter to anyone at this point in the movie. So, And then it was another of those sins. Mahershala Ali literally had nothing to do. And the character Uh, from the manga is a lot more uh, duplicitous, and he plays both sides, and he has more to do. And for them to just have him be essentially a he was at, at times like a puppet for the main bad guy, like, yeah. like literally like the main bad guy would kind of download into his brain and speak through him. Oh, wow. um, he had nothing to do. And that was like kind of unforgivable. I didn't hate it though. Um, I think that's, that's one of the tough things though, that the, the movie studios do is they have to hedge yeah. their bets and play to what they think is going to not only give them the best outcome in terms of money up front, but then potential earnings in the long run, and right. so we get a we get a we end up getting a watered down product, but it's still a huge blockbuster. Mm-hmm. But it's like for people who watch movies all the time, it's like you're you're killing me. Like give me give yeah. me the whole product, give me the product that I'm paying for. Right. And what you just said in that uh, studios hedging their bets. I mean, we talk about it a lot in our podcast, not necessarily that point per se, but we do talk a lot about how studios seem to lack the um, imagination or the willingness, be it in the stories or the cast. I mean, perfect example, perfect example is uh, Jordan Peele because when he, we'll start with Get Out. I yeah. mean, I have, I have, I have no doubt, and, and I believe the story, like a, a bunch of studios passed on on right. Get Out. It took him a while to, to get this going. And from one movie, he he is almost like a genre onto himself in, yep. in a way, and especially from the reviews of Us. Now, if it was left up to a studio to put that together, say, the Get Out package, oh, it would probably, you know, it wouldn't be anywhere close to what Jordan Peele gave us. And yeah. We always we, we just mention though that how how sometimes it there's so much creativity out there. I mean, there's so many, be it actors or writers that just have a good, different, distinct vision that mm-hmm. Hollywood doesn't seem to be able to get out of the old way of of casting somebody or or how 
an action movie is supposed to go. Like, I'm so grateful, just in terms of action, that Hollywood has finally left the whole shaky camera thing. I think it's done. Yeah, I got it. I <laughs> think like, that's finally Everyone ran and threw up in the bathroom multiple times during the movie. I know. Yes. If there was like a whole period of the early... Handheld found footage. Like everything was <laughs> put... I mean, and action sequences, you just couldn't see anything that was going on in your... Well, it was after... Right. It, it was after... Um, Blair Saving Witch. Pri- Saving Pri- Private Ryan, too, though. That was like... Did the shaky cam. Yeah, where he was they like... Back. He, he's Spielberg's like running around. Yeah. Filming but the it's thing. a lot of... The yeah. Bourne movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of times we feel like, and we've talked about this, too, is that Hollywood producers and executives, they will take the wrong lesson from movies that are super successful so yeah. the the Blair Witch Project was super successful and it was you know underground it made a ton of money and they took okay people want to see found footage shaky cams let's make 10 of those or you have paranormal activity where you know they set up all the cameras so they're like that's not the thing that made it interesting that was right. a, that was definitely the gimmick part of it but it was well acted it was interestingly crafted there was a new kind of demon that we hadn't seen before it was a new situation that we hadn't seen before but they just take okay shaky cam let's make 10 of those okay found <laughs> footage like cameras all over let's make 10 of those like they take the yeah. wrong lessons and run with it rather than or you know even wonder woman was wildly successful but right. dc just can't seem to get it together. Um, we talked about this briefly um, when after Wonder Woman came out and then the Justice League came out, how, you know, you go back and you watch Wonder Woman, it's very much the female gaze where you see these strong women, you see like their, their muscles, you see them, their eyes, you see everything that makes them human beings and then you watch the Justice League and there's like upskirt booty shots and it's like they just... Aren't they, quite they can't figure it. out who they want to be. That's they what they're cannot like, figure out who they want to be. They're chasing Marvel. They want. They're like, we should be funny, like Marvel is. They they do all these quirky fourth wall breaking things. We should do that. But then in the same vein, they're like trying to be as serious and like this is this is like world ending type stuff. You have to believe right. in it. It's going right. to change your life. And they just they, to- they have no identity. Right, they're trying to keep that Christopher Nolan Batman vibe and then yeah. marry it to the marble, bright, colorful universe. And it just, instead of just paving a new path, they right. want to mishmash other things that have been successful. And that doesn't always work. Which, which Marvel is getting to a point where they've done it, they've done it well, their storytelling. And they, they tell the same story. Well, not the same. They, they, tell the, they have the same structure outline in each Bye. movie that they make. Um, and I really liked I really liked uh, Captain Marvel. I know it's yeah. got some it's gotten some bad reviews for some reason, but to me it felt like it felt like uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like it was obviously set in the '90s, but if you remember Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, like the yeah. the prosthetics that they used for the face, it was like real funny. Yeah. It, yeah, I felt it so, and I loved Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was like my favorite television yeah. show. It gave yeah. me that feel. I thought uh, yeah. Brie Larson did a great job as as an actress in that movie, and she gets so much hate for from so many I different people. Be. I don't understand sure. it. I don't. I don't get into it. I don't understand it. But like her acting merit, it was for me. It was I, good. I enjoyed it. I, I will be honest. For me, uh, Brie. I thought she was a, a little lacking in personality. Yeah. Like, for, for whatever reason, I was like, there was just so, something there. Now, I liked the movie. I had a yeah. great time overall yeah. with Captain Marvel. I just, because I, I think I, I was sort of looking at her and, and with the other women in the, in the Marvel universe, and they, they, those other women just seemed to have just a... I don't know, like like a fire in them. Like yeah. there was just something now, and it was just me. But I, I just I don't know. Brie herself, she just seemed a little like uh, needs like a little the more. Matching, the matching of her powers with her personality, it seemed like somebody with that amount of ability should have somehow. I don't know because she was she was definitely like giving off the goofy kind of like I don't really care kind of vibe. 
in the whole movie, but I think that was the theme. It was like it was it was poking fun of itself the entire movie. Um, in my opinion, I thought it was like they were they were making fun of themselves a lot. They were kind of poking poking fun at the whole the whole idea of a campy campy nineties. I even felt like Dawson's Creek when they're at the like I don't know if you guys when they're at the farmhouse when they're at the yeah farmhouse, yeah yeah and like it's got the long shot of the the old house over here and then the the colonial house. I was like, is this Dawson's Creek? Like, are we on? I'm like, I got this because it's got that campy kind of like I don't know. I know, like Brie Larson. I I mean that's one of our our disagreements. I've liked her since the United States of Terror. Like the thing about her is she's extremely subtle. And I 100% appreciate that as, you know, you know, I kind of consider myself a subtle actress as well. And I love her, her just sensibility and her humor is just, I just click with it for whatever reason. And I think that the buddy cop pairing of Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson yeah. was the best pairing I've seen in the Marvel yeah. Universe. And and just because Captain Marvel, for the first time in this 10 years we've been watching these movies, is the first time we really know who Nick Fury is as a character. Yes. And that yeah. was phenomenal. I think yeah. that was one of the things, too. We saw we saw uh, Samuel L. Jackson play Nick Fury as a vulnerable character, as opposed yeah. to this, this, like, hardened, badass yeah. dude that nothing bothered. Like, he's he, the way he acts with that cat, you're obviously like, okay, they're going for something here. Like he's he's an innocent young guy who's just figuring this stuff out. Like he yeah. just the world just fell down on his lap. He had no idea aliens were here. And yeah. Like this is all new to him. He became a real person in this movie, and I I'm here for it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, so the, all the talk about the movies, you guys have a passion for for film because you're both actors, mm -hmm. and that's how you met, right? Yes, uh, we met in acting class some decade ago or so. Um, and it was like oh six or oh seven. Uh, no. Uh, the earlier oh five. I oh five. Oh my gosh! I, yeah. The first time. <laughs> Where was Smooth it? Long time ago. Um, we took class in North Hollywood with this um, really amazing acting teacher. Her name is Lauren Patrice Nadler. She's actually still, you know, a coach and, and teaches classes and has an improv troupe and does a ton of stuff. Her students are work constantly. And it was an amazing class. Um, and out of that, in our group of friends, we produced a web series together. And then Don and I had these other writing projects that we would go back and forth on. And we just kind of kept in touch and then I moved to Louisiana and we just uh, decided to do a podcast remotely kind of how we're doing our, our, our interview here through Skype like we would have our, our podcast uh, that's how TCAD got started we were in separate states at the time mm -hmm. so so what was it that, what, what do you think it was that connected you to I mean was it similar obviously not similar personalities <laughs> well, it's. It, I, I will say it. I will say from that acting class, there were, and it. I think everybody who, whatever class they're in, always you know thinks that their class is you know the greatest in the world. But yeah. we we had like we had um, uh, Joseph Julian Soria, who you'll see on like the Oath on on Crackle. Uh -huh. we, you know, we have um, we have some people that have done some some good work. You know, um, and they were all. I mean, all of them are and still are. They're they're working somewhere. Like some went to yeah. New York. Some some have been traveling uh, for uh, work, working on different indie uh, projects, like. Yeah. Uh, with Supergirl, uh, Livewire. Um, Britt Morgan. Britt Morgan. She was in our okay. class. And, and you've seen her on, on again, as Livewire and Supergirl. Um, yeah, and I see that. We, we connected all, to, all, all of us because, we, we, A, we, we loved being in the class. And, and right. we've seen the class. So we love doing the scene. And all of us are, are basically like, hey, if somebody is just working on something, then okay, boom, let, let, let's do it. That's really what what bonded us all because 
again, like Sherry's got this great uh, series that's out there, the Zoe and Chloe Private Detectives, that yeah. she had been writing for a while. I mean, she, she almost had, I think it was like, didn't you write it almost like as a full length movie and then you sort of broke it down to episodes? Yeah, it it was, well, I wrote it as a, it was a pilot. Um, and then I decided right, that, pilot. you know, if we wanted to shoot it, I would break it into five minute segments. So each episode would be, so we had a 30 minute show at the end of the thing, but nice. it was all, it was like, and then the second season. And I think that's the thing that got Don and I really together was our similar work ethic in terms of pushing a project and pushing a project and pushing a project until it's done. You know, it's yeah. really easy in Los Angeles to get distracted. It's, it's really easy to kind of let things fall away and start something and never finish it. And both of us kind of had the mentality of no matter how long this takes, we're going to yeah. finish. Yeah. yeah. And, and we had, we had help from a bunch of people in the class and it was all done on zero to very little budget. And, <sighs> People showed up, and it took a while. It took a w just to do some of these episodes took a while, but we were like, okay, whenever we can get together, we're gonna finish it. We're gonna do it. Like she said, however long it takes, and and people can still it's it's still on YouTube. If somebody takes it out, it's there's so much great potential with it yeah. that I I'm always I keep telling Trace she needs to to do a, a reboot of it, and and we need to go back into that because. I still think it's a great idea. I would love to, to see do that's that's one of the that's one of the greatest things I, I think you can do is because there there are so many ideas out there. Everyone's got an idea for everything, whether it be good or bad. It's the, the issue is not the idea. The issue is always the execution of the idea, and is it going to be followed through with? And a lot of times, the ideas just never fall through with. But taking the initiative to go and do the thing yourself, like. With me, I've, I've wanted to be an actor since I was a kid. I've also wanted to be a writer, and I've accomplished the, the writing goal. I've written a couple books, but it's like not waiting around for somebody to tell you, it's okay, you can go ahead and do this now. It's like you taking the initiative and saying, I want to do this, and I'm going to become resourceful enough to make this thing happen in my life no matter what. And seeing that through is such a powerful thing because it, it may not, like that project may not become the greatest thing in the world, but what it leads to in your own mind and your own life is like this freedom that I can do anything I want to do. Like I don't have to yeah. wait for a, anybody yeah. to tell me I'm yeah. ready to, and that's that's powerful. And and and, and we also try to, to to make sure to tell people that it's it's not going to be even trying to do a project. It, it's not going to happen right away. Like yeah. I, I know sometimes people might finish something. And they're all pumped up to, to, to shoot it. And, and they're, they're just full of that energy to do it now. But then you find out sometimes certain things take time to, to get the right. the right people or you have to find a location. The key thing is, and, and no matter what it is, just have to, as long as you have the goal, however long it takes, it's fine. It, that's just how long it takes. But just so yeah. long as whatever you're doing is taking that one step towards the goal. All you have to do is keep taking that one step towards the goal, and you will get there. Yep. So, and, and and we're still doing it, you know, ourselves. I, again, you know, uh, Sheree uh, is now coming out with with season three of, of Good Morning Antioch, and it's as you can see, I'm on the the, the deck of my my starship <laughs> here is where I live. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know. And I mean, she's, she's in the bowels of the city somewhere, right? Exactly. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I um. <laughs> this actually that's kind of how Antioch got started was I was in New Orleans at the time and we were talking about Zoe and Chloe and how it was kind of like herding cats getting every it was a bigger cast getting everyone together and I Antioch was this project where it started as a podcast and it still is a podcast it's like a um a scripted comedy science fiction comedy where I could get recordings from people and no matter what happened, if an episode didn't come out, the only person that was responsible for it was me. Oh, okay. So it was, 
you know, I wasn't having to rely on tons of tons of, of people and locations and the weather and things that could fall through. And as we moved into the second season and it became live action, I wanted to, you know, I had green screen and, and Don, I have a puppet character that Don does the voice of and he'll send me the recording That's and awesome. then I'll, I'll do the puppet in on a green What's screen. What's the voice? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to interrupt, but I want to know the voice. <laughs> <laughs> he's so smooth oh. he's like a smooth talking <laughs> sales, salesman puppet um Dude, puppets are the best sorry keep going and then no we'll no, no. it's just it's just a matter of you know i had some I, in new orleans i got into um i worked on parade floats and okay. a lot of people I worked with worked on movies and did, you know, movie uh, scenic stuff. And they um, helped me build this set that, you know, you know, that's what we were working on in New Orleans. So I have like the set that they could, I shipped it out here and, you know, and wow. able to just have it in my house and we can do this that's whenever. So cool. And so it, it became a matter of, you know, personal accountability, I guess, where, you know, and then things, you know, it's difficult when you're working with no money, but you want it to look as good as possible. Um, sure. it's, it's definitely a fine line. And and Don and I are very much about not putting out garbage <laughs> just because it's, it's easy. I'd rather wait and have it be good. You know, garbage. It's a very uh, subjective <laughs> subjective term. <laughs> it's like. I tend to believe I can. I am incapable of putting out garbage. <laughs> Everything is great that I do. If you don't like it, it's just that's it's, the mentality. It's, it's because it's art, man, and you it's don't art, understand man. art, man. <laughs> I'm art. It's not my fault. <laughs> no, it's just a matter of taking the time to make sure it's done as good as we can possibly do it. Absolutely. You know, as opposed to rushing something out. I want to ask you because it's got to be. And I was just thinking this because I look back at my life sometimes and I think about what I'm doing now and I'm like, how the heck did I get here? Having a studio like that in your home, do you look back and it, you know, when you were, when you were dreaming about being an actress and dreaming about being in entertainment and that kind of thing and think one day I'll have a studio of some sort in my house or like a starship in my home where I can go and record, like, did, do you think back to that and like, how the hell did this <laughs> How did this happen? You know what? It's 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 necessity being the mother of invention because I, I just wanted to be an actor and just go to set and do my job and work on a show and go home and like lay by the pool and do whatever. Yes. But the the types <laughs> of of roles that I'm interested in, you know, I like weird science fiction. I like stuff like Brazil. I like Douglas Adams. I like Kurt Vonnegut. Like I like weird I you, you know Monty Python yeah. nonsense. But you know black women are not in those things. They're not cast in those things. They're not, you know, necessarily involved or at least they haven't been in Hollywood in the past. Right. And so, you know, it was even something like Zoe and Chloe private time Detectives, I could see that on Nickelodeon with two little white girls. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I could. And right. so I started, that's kind of really how this all got started, was writing the types of material that we wanted to be in that we didn't see. And that's actually how we met, was because I wrote a book that started as a script for this weird genre-bendy urban fantasy science fiction thing thing that I would love to be in. So the main character is essentially me. And then, you know, all of my, my friends who were actors, I wrote them as like, the characters were based around who I could see playing them. And yeah. so it's a super huge, you know, multi-racial cast that you don't necessarily see or hadn't seen in the past. Like, I feel like the tide has turned on that some, and maybe now is the perfect time for something like that to, to happen. But the script just grew and grew and grew and became a novel um, yeah. that I'm querying now. And I joined the writer community and that's kind of how I like met you <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's been an amazing experience meeting all these people who are, are so creative and driven, you know, just like we were. Yeah, the written word is such a powerful thing. Like I know um, what you're doing is is it's incredible testament to what writing and and speaking 
the uh, a powerful word into existence can be because like even with like do you all know the story of sylvester stallone and how rocky was made and all that kind of like yes. he had no <laughs> nobody wanted to give him any opportunities and you i got him like but nobody wanted yeah. to give him a chance and he wrote a script for himself and he wouldn't sell it to anybody unless they let him play and like he sold his dog like, he's like he was so dead set on doing the thing that he wanted to do it sounds like, I mean, that's the same kind of mindset that you're in. Like, if you're not going to write something for me, I'm going to write something for my damn self. And I'm going to make it happen. And, and what's amazing is I'm glad you brought that up. It, just to even touch some more. He did that in, you know, the mid or early 70s. Yeah. This was a time when <laughs> there was no way for just your average Joe to make a film. Everything was done on film. You had to buy film, yeah. film cameras. I mean, the ease to which you can record or, or even what we're doing here, unfathomable back then. And right. his wherewithal of like, no, I'm going to convince a studio to make yeah. me a nobody. The yeah. star. Look, I've told, I've told Dre, the whole Rocky franchise, except for Rocky Five. That will we don't talk about that. We don't yeah, talk that was... about that. Tommy Gunn. Tommy. No. We don't we don't speak about that one. No. Sorry. This is actually <laughs> one of the most quintessential American franchises of the underdog. And everybody, especially in our business, in entertainment in any form, you yeah. are such the underdog that I mean if 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 you can't relate to Rocky, I just don't know what else you can relate to. Yeah, and I, th I think not enough people know the, the true story behind it, like we're talking about. Exactly. Like, that, yeah. that story is absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah. You have to know your worth and be, be like, have that conviction. You know, if especially with like i'm i'm kind of in the place where you know if somebody wanted to buy antioch or if i you know want to traditionally i'm still oscillating between traditional publishing or trying to self publish uh the watchers um the book and so it's like is that something I'm prepared to let go of? You know, I'm a voiceover actor. I want to do the audiobook. I just do. Um, why else am I doing all of this? Um, yeah. But as far as, you know, giving away the rights and having it become part of the machine, you know, it's it's really difficult because, you know, in this town, money talks. And, um, but you, you why, am else, why else am I writing these things if not for us? So, right. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Discover finding out what the true value of it is, like having a, a, a value statement of this is this is my life, and is it really about the money and the fame, or is it about what this this project means to me as a human being? Because right. money and fame is so fleeting, like it can come and go, but like having that thing that you said, I did this myself, you know, and I brought this to the world, like nobody was ever ever going to be able to take that from you. But that's something right. we have to define. Yeah. You know, we have to be yeah. able to define that. You, you you've got to want to do something for. I won't even say the right reasons, but obviously you've got to have yours. Like, yeah. look, don't get me wrong. Um, say, it, be it an, an actor or or a writer. Um, if you get well known, obviously that that sort of of fame, it, it feels great, you know. But mm -hmm. if if the fame is, is taken away, if just simply doing the craft doesn't fulfill you. Like, yeah. I've always told somebody when they say, oh, wouldn't it be great to be, you know, like famous, like a, a Tom Cruise or a Denzel Washington. I'm like, I would rather be the guy that walking down the street, somebody's like, I think I've seen him somewhere. And I'm <laughs> yeah. fine with that. Because then that means I'm busy working. You've seen yeah. me in a million places, but you just can't quite place my face. I am cool with that. That means I'm doing my job right, that I am out there working on the craft, keeping mm -hmm. busy, playing these characters that you know the character, but you're just not sure of the actor that does it. I, I, I would be more than satisfied with that. And if that sort of almost anonymity doesn't, is, isn't fine with you as you're doing your craft, then I don't know, you, you might have to sort of rethink what, 
what are you doing it for? You know, right. And I think yes. that the point you brought up earlier too about having, you know, having a studio in my home and if if I ever saw that, I feel like I'm more grateful for the journey that I've been on where I, you know, I know how to edit. Like I I learned how to edit in college. I and I edit everything that we do and, and sometimes I'll hand it off to a more professional editor and then they'll give it back to me, but editing, sound, music, lighting, color correction, filming, knowing things about different cameras. We're going to Santa Gear, you know, next month. And just, I feel like in the long run, long term, I mean, I even, you know, directed some things. It's just mm. going to have a more fulfilling, viable career That's that, that if somebody, you know, if a studio tells me no, that's okay. I can go do it. I can, I know everything. I want to know as much about every facet as possible. So if, so nobody can tell me no. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. That's, and it, it's like, it's like the analogy. Um, I don't know where I heard it, but it's like becoming a marathon runner because you want to win a race. If, if you're becoming a, if you're doing that because you want to win a race, then you're going to be sorely and sadly, uh, <laughs> let down a lot of times but if you become a marathon runner because you love running yes then every single day you're fulfilled like it takes yeah. nothing more than to put some shoes on and go out and run and that's kind of the, the feeling i get for you for you guys it's like as long as we're doing the thing what and whatever in, at whatever level it's at um then i'm fulfilled with it and i i believe that's crucial to to life in general to happiness in life is doing the things that light you up and that you love every single day no matter what level you're at and if you're doing them you start getting better at it. like you're talking about editing and all this kind of stuff you start getting better at it and your level starts to rise because your skill level starts rising and people mm -hmm. start taking notice that wait a second this this person's really good at what they're doing but let's give them some more money <laughs> so they can yeah. so they can do yeah. it for us <laughs> and then and yeah. then it's like an effortless thing it just happens and 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 another thing we, we we also try to to impart is is to let people know that everybody's situation is is obviously different, and, and how people are able to to um, express their creativity in, in a sense of like, look, we all have life issues we have to deal with, you know, um, be it family, kids. I mean, people got to work, you know, rents got to be paid, bills have to be paid. But however, aside from all that, you can still focus some part of yourself to being creative, to yeah. going after that goal of, you know, uh, either being an actor, being a writer, a, a producer, whatever. You can still, you can still uh, take that step towards that while you're dealing with your real life. I mean, I read that Ava DuVernay, Ava DuVernay had a regular job as a publicist while she was filming her first movie. So, I mean, yeah. she was literally doing both at the same time. Yeah. So it, it's not something um, that I, I make sure to tell people that don't ever, you know, discourage yourself if you're, you're working a regular nine to five job because A, you, you, that's how you keep the roof over your head or if you have a family. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But as long as you still devote your time to whatever that creative outlet is that, that you're aiming for and you want to make that you're nine to five, you keep going after that. And in some way, shape or form, something out of it will metastasize to feed that creative part of you. And, and who knows, like, I'll be honest, I never thought I would ever um, do any kind of podcasting of any sort. Yeah. But it was one of those where it, it was an idea and I was like, hey, that, that might also be another good creative outlet And then, you know, it led me to, to asking Sheree if she wanted to get involved in it. And it, it seemed to tie into certain other things that she wanted to do. I mean, you just never know where, yeah. you know, your, your creativity might lead you into other avenues that help fuel you create creatively. Well, you know, you're also, you know, dealing with ever, whatever real life stuff you've got to take care of. You know, they just want to make sure people don't ever just give up totally. And, and just sort of leave it at the side because I think more people, is that, that's not the sort of regret I personally would, would want to, to live with. I mean, I can deal with 
trying something and it not working than having yeah. never tried it at all, you, you yeah. know? Well, it's like living in, it's, it's what I think a lot of people um, don't see it properly. It's like if, if you have any experience in finances, um, like having to work a job and pay off debt as you go, it's kind of like inve- you, like with life we're investing, we, ob- we obviously have to take care of the things that keep us alive, that, we, that keep us surviving. Mm-hmm. We have to invest the additional, the, whatever additional we have above the survival point into something that's going to make us thrive. Because if we, if we only live at a, at a level of survival and we're only investing in our survival um, our entire life, we'll never be more than, you know, the, the, the risen piece of dirt that we were, right? It's like, how do we, how do we break free from that? And I, and I really think it is, it, it's a financial, financial principle. It's like you, you uh, have to pay off that bad debt as quick as possible in your life so that you can move on to the things that really, really inspire you. And I'm talking about bad debt in terms of just like not living above your means in life, mm-hmm. like, Working the job that you want to work, but investing in something you're passionate about, like acting or writing and that kind of thing for a little, because it's not going to be forever, right? It's, it's, we get that idea that I'm going to have to do this forever for the rest of my life. But if I do it well enough for long enough, it's like compound interest. It'll build up on itself until eventually it pays off huge. And then you don't have to suffer or as, as much. Right. Well, even now, I can't imagine if I start making, you know, tons of money on on a series, I can't imagine not taking that money. And instead of buying, you know, a mansion in Malibu, I want a studio. Like, I want... I want to build things for the rest of us. Like, I want us to keep making this thing bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, I am not um, content with just living the Hollywood lifestyle, going to work every day anymore. Like now I want more than that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it becomes more than just let me get a bunch of money so I can buy a mansion to yeah. take all my, take all yeah. my money, pay for that yeah. mansion. Yeah. yeah. Let me get a bunch of money so I can make more stuff. <laughs> right. yeah. It just doesn't make sense because, it, if, because it's yeah. basically like I'm, if I'm going to work at this job that I hate, so I can pay the light bill, the gas bill. I can pay for the Netflix and the Hulu and and all these luxuries that I think I have to have at the at the moment. You know, it's it's like move. We have to move past that idea and just be like, I'm gonna invest in the things that I love. Like you said, the studio and just raising our platform a little at a time. Yeah, it's, if, it's such if, a cool thing. If if, if if I if I could. Almost in in terms of like if I could you know snap snap my fingers to be in that you know perfect position I could be in, it would almost be the same thing that that Sheree said. It, it would I'd want to um, have my own production company, and I would yeah. want to finance nothing but uh, new writers, uh, new actors, uh, just new ideas, and, and just finance that and just turn that and, and put it out there and just create all new stuff for, for people who just haven't been given the shot before or just need that one first first opportunity to understand yeah. the business and see how it is. That's, that would be my perfect situation to, yeah. to have a production company doing that as well as, you know, you can have your own personal pet projects, but I would want to be giving those those new writers, actors, or, or, or anybody else in the production process who are just looking for that that first start, that first spark to get them going, mm-hmm. I would I would want to be doing that, and because there's there's nothing nothing better than you, you're giving you're giving somebody that 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 first opportunity because you, you yeah. really be surprised at how people can grab a hold of it and just run with it. Well, yeah, because we we spend half of our life thinking we're these small, insignificant things, and in a, a big sense of the word, we are. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, but when you have somebody up here reach out to you and pull you up with them, okay. it's like the, the you literally. And I think it was TD Jakes that was talking about like I used to pick up my kids all the time um, when I'd come home because I would literally lift my children and change their world, change their perspective. It's like you're literally changing the whole person's entire perspective of life 
when we're able to lift them with us. And, and that's a profound thing to be able to do that for another human being. Need more of that in Hollywood. Yeah, I know, right? We're all we're all hugging trees and <laughs> Hollywood is so fearful because there's yeah, yeah. so much money involved and people are there's so many people who get a paycheck and don't do anything or don't know really what they do and so they have or they're afraid they're going to lose it or they don't know how it happened and so you or they're afraid of being poor like there's just this culture of fear around not having enough not being enough pieces of the pie and it's like instead of fighting over scraps of this pie like bake new pies like it's right. not there is no such thing as there's not enough roles there's too many actors there's there's a plethora of channels there's a, a million different streaming opportunities there there is you know you can't live your life in in a fear of lack like you just yeah. like the, the universe has enough yeah absolutely and yeah, i think it, there, it, there's go ahead sorry it, it uh, just to piggyback on that it all boils down to just the, the one question that i keep asking how did green book win an oscar <laughs> i still do not understand stop it stop green it book won <laughs> the oscar hey, you said ah. it did yes yeah. How did it win? It you did didn't like it? Oh, God. Do you like the movie? We're not going to get into it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't care for award shows at all. Okay. I think they're nonsense. I don't know how you judge art, how somebody's going to tell me this picture is better than the other. But Green Book, really? It wasn't Sorry. even about the Green Book, really. So It wasn't about the Green other. Book at all. I was super exactly. bummed about it. It's, it's, it's always, it's always, it, yeah, it's always about more than, it, it's always about the message than it is about the actual product. Um, and I was going to say, touching on baking the new, baking more pies, like we need more people of value in the world in general. Um, like you said, there are, there's so much fear. We're all afraid to be some ourselves that we forget that by being somebody else that we're creating zero value for the world. We're creating negative value there's already that person we don't need another one and and we don't have enough people who want to step out and be themselves and i think the 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 real test is like there's obviously any any single human being could have done a youtube channel can do a youtube channel can do exactly what we're doing right and i have no fear whatsoever if anybody else wants to do this I, I, I mean, my whole thing is like promoting everybody else's work because at the end of the day, if, if I'm interesting, they're interesting, like people are going to watch whoever they want. Like I have no choice over what people choose to watch or, or digest or whatever it is. My only opportunity, my only choice is to be the best me I can be as entertaining as humanly possible as I believe I can be and then let people make the decision on their own. Like, I'm not I'm not a hypnotist. I'm not like trying to convince people, <laughs> look at how great I am. Just be great, right? And then see what happens. There's not enough people doing that in my opinion. I can but agree so with that. What what projects are y'all working on right now? Uh well, we have our ongoing TCAD podcast, um, which is on, you know, Stitcher and iTunes and, and all the places you get your podcasts where we do uh movie breakdowns, we talk about filmmaking, the industry, you know, all of that stuff, um, behind the scenes stuff, trade shows. And then Good Morning Antioch is the scripted show that we do. It's a podcast and web series dual projects so you could listen to it or you can watch it on youtube so we try to do both um and that is season three we're writing that um and hopefully going to start going into production on that super soon i promise we're like rick and morty <laughs> over here happen. no it's like rick and morty over That'd here getting getting these seasons out um it, it was a larger undertaking <laughs> than i thought doing both video it's and audio because it has to make sense without the video so yeah. you know having it be a dual project was a little more ambitious of an undertaking than than i thought <laughs> but um yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah. Try not to rely too much on visual aids while you're doing it. Well, and then also when we do the video version, I try to slip in jokes that are only video. So it gives people a reason to do either. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then, um, but it makes sense. Yeah. And then uh, what else are we doing, Don? <laughs> Our uh, dissertations. Yeah, obviously, uh, uh, TCAD itself, which if you check at tcadnetwork.com, it's got all. Everything all of, there. Everything is on, on the website. For okay. Me, and that'll all be linked in the description of this video too. So everyone will. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, it, just for me, I, I'm still rewriting and writing. Um, I've got three projects that I've got. Uh, Sheree would know. It, it must be eight, nine years. One of them is uh, called uh, Martial Law. The other one is is called uh, What Had Happened Was. Oh, and yeah. That, what had happened was. What happened was. <laughs> the third <laughs> is, called, is called Cleetwood that... I've just been holding on to, and I'm still rewriting. I mean, there's three projects I would love to to get start filming. It, it's it's just I don't know if they're in their final form yet, or maybe they're they're good enough that maybe I'm over analyzing it and will never actually be done. You know, like at a certain point, yeah. you have to know, okay, I'm done. You know. Yeah. So hopefully that there's those are three projects that I would love to. I mean, we. We tried the, doing the martial law. Uh, we, we attempted to, to film, like, it's like the, the pilot. Unfortunately, like, at the last minute, we had one of the actors couldn't make it. So yeah. we sort of have, like, an incomplete sort of a, a pilot uh, episode there. But I would love to get back into that. But the two other projects are kind of cool that I would like to do. It's, it's still writing and rewriting, but holding on to these three, and I'm like, I'm going to get those, one of those started. You just got to, yeah. it's like one day at a time, one step at a time. I, yeah. I, I do fall into that trap as well of doing too many things. Like I feel like I'm doing too many things. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I kind of had an epiphany yesterday where I was, you know, everybody always says, you know, focus on one thing and do that well. You know, and it's like, yeah, my journey is a little more meandery and it's a little more wandery and, and, but you know what? I'm just going to keep doing all the things here. Yeah. I'm doing all of the things <laughs> and they're all coming with me. Like I'm, I'm writing these things and I'm acting in these things and I have this book and I have this web series and I have these yep. art projects and they're all coming with me and you guys can go pound sand, you yeah, know? <laughs> and at the end of the day, I mean, if you're happy doing them, it's like, what's the big deal? It's, it's about, it's about your own enjoyment, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I get yeah. I get caught up a lot in thinking like I'll be doing one thing and really enjoying it and into it and I'll be thinking I should be doing this thing over here. Why aren't I doing that thing over there? Like I owe that thing anything. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like just do what you're doing if it, if it's making you happy. And then when you're done with it, go do the next thing. Yeah. It's a it's a hard it's a hard balance for all of us. It is, it is. You don't want to have, you know, ten unfinished products, but yeah. you know, eventually <laughs> they they will all get finished <laughs> if you just keep yeah. moving forward. Absolutely. Yep. Um but Shri, you're acting as well. You have multi are you you're on a, a television show now, right? Um, no, no. I um I just it was just like one episode. <laughs> you were on episode, but it's still I mean Yeah, yeah. It, NCIS? Yeah, I did That's that awesome. um, before I left New Orleans. I yeah. did NCIS. I did a couple movies. I mean, that was the whole reason why I went there in the first place is, you know, we were thinking it might be better to do bigger credits or smaller credits on bigger projects than just yeah. to, to kind of, you know, build momentum for sure. the, the projects that we're doing. Um, and so, yeah. So, yeah. Does it feel weird to talk about it? No, it's just... You know, whenever you talk about stuff that you've been in, people are, they, they're like, so what are you in now? And it's like, nothing. <laughs> but no, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in my studio. I'm in my I'm pajamas in, right my, now. I'm in my spaceship. <laughs> I'm in my spaceship right now, you know, doing whatever. Um, but I actually, since I've been back in Los Angeles, I haven't, I've been finishing this book. I haven't even 
submitted for a single audition since I've been back. And so now that the book is done and I'm starting the query process, I'm going to get back into the auditioning thing. So sometimes you do have to put certain things down to pick up other things. Yeah. So getting those priorities in line. That's yeah. Important. So now that the book's in query stage, I'm going to jump back into acting and I, I'm talking to some agents and uh, we're going to see so what you, we can you do. Sent out, you sent out a bunch of letters. Uh, yeah. And I, I have some that I'm, I'm about to hit send on today and it's so weird and hard and nerve wracking, but. But you found you you have an agent for acting, correct? No, I haven't had one since I came back to L.A. I had one in Louisiana um, and I've had one in L.A. in the past. But now that I'm full time back into acting, I'm, I'm I'm talking to some agents. Yeah. So you're looking for an agent for writing and acting at the moment. Yes. And it's a very different thing. I had no idea where to start with looking for a writing agent. Uh, acting, I got. I, I understand how that works. But writing is so different. Yeah. I know. You got to... I mean, it's literally just got to mail off a whole bunch of stuff or email off a whole bunch of stuff. You got to find these directories where these people have their secret email accounts that, <laughs> that only the, the smartest among us know. And they want a specific query in a specific format. Some want it in the body of the email. Some want attachments. Some want you to use like the query tracker software and upload. Like it's very specific. I've decided when I query this time around for uh, my next book, I'm going to go completely off the reservation with how I do it because I, it's got to be something different. I mean, I can't imagine being an agent like looking at the exact same format for the exact same thing every day, day after day. Again, having to pick something out. Right. I think there needs to be more adult pop-up books. In my <laughs> <laughs> you should send a whole display. You should send, send like a box display. Be, I, I would take a look at that. If there was actually an adult pop-up book, I would I say, okay, I have to see what this like, is. Like, who is this? The Riddler? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all, kinds of, all kinds of newspaper cut out letters and stuff. What is going on? That would actually like be amazing, cool. though. You got to get their attention. I mean, you got to grab somebody's attention. You know, everyone's spinning signs on the side of the street nowadays. You got to do something different. Right. Got to th throw that damn sign in the car. <laughs> Say, get over there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's a challenge when it feels, it can feel like there's so many gatekeepers to, you know, it's, it's a crazy thing where, you know, ours is the only profession where you can go to school for it. Like we like we've done. You can do it for you know ten plus years, and still somebody says you you're not an actor. You you know you can go to school to be yeah. a doctor and do a residency, and you're a doctor. Right. <laughs> you know I can go I can have a degree in theater, and I can act in a bunch of stuff, and I can still have somebody tell me you're not an actor, and that's uh, it's so crazy. But yeah. it's got to be difficult to to deal with on a, on a regular basis i mean you have to develop that thick skin that they talk about even if it's not thick skin just like oily skin just like things slide right off of you and you're like i'm worried about it well because right. it's stuff that you're not even you're not even responsible for like you can't do anything about it yeah they just want a certain thing and you can't change Right. And you never know. You might look like somebody's ex-wife that they hate. Like, it right. could be something as minute where they didn't like the perfume you were wearing that day. It's it's nonsense. Yeah, you go into <laughs> an audition, and they're like, I just hate your face. I'm sorry. Can you get like... <laughs> no, but literally, yes. <laughs> That's what happens. You're done. I, I gotta give it a try. I'm only going to uh, some auditions. Um, I want to give I want to give each of you a... F uh, I've never done the, like I said, the, the two-way, the three-way thing. So... Final word for each. Um, Shreve, we'll go ahead and start with you. If you want a final word for the writing community or anybody uh, who watches this. I think just, you know, especially the writing community who I've really gotten to know over these past few months, just just keep doing it. Like, you know, don't get discouraged. It's hard. It's, it's hard to hit that word count every day. It's hard to write every day. Everybody has lives. But just keep doing it. Keep moving forward. Keep being kind. Drink water stretch <laughs> stay hydrated no for real like it's really easy to neglect yourself and 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 not take that time for a certain amount of self-care you can't take care of your life if you can't take care of your body and you know get up and stretch that's crucial drink water that's 
crucial. Um, don't stare at that screen too long without taking exactly hydrate. Um, it is. and just keep writing. Like, don't let people get you down about it. You know, you just got to keep doing it. That's beautiful. Can I also ask? Can you show us the T-shirt? Oh, this today. <laughs> I am, I am your father. Hey, <laughs> Wonderful. That's that's kind of my art thing. Is a, I wear random random t shirts. <laughs> I hope to get to a point in our show where where companies want to send them to me. <laughs> start making start making your own. I've been wanting to make t shirts for a long time. You guys start yeah, selling yeah. swag. Well, I have Antioch t shirts. I should have wore one, but I felt like I'm already on the ship. Like I didn't want to be too self promoting about it, but. Uh, just have a spinning sign on your head that says yes. Antioch. Yes. <laughs> Don, last word for you, man. I would say uh, just to all all the creatives out there, it's just like, listen, no matter what, uh, you, you just have to take it. Look, like 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 Rocky says, one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. You just keep going forward and. Don't be, you know, don't be afraid to, to support the next person as well, because, you know, too much is built on just protecting your own, just to make sure you stay in, in, in your job as opposed to, you know, giving somebody a chance so they can learn or at least share some knowledge. So be willing to share some knowledge. Never get discouraged, no matter what your situation is, no matter how old you are. Remember, Morgan Freeman didn't get famous till he was in his 50s so yeah. don't Same worry about how you, are, oh, yeah. you know or what you're doing you just keep pushing forward with your creative process whatever you want and eventually yeah. it will come through and by all means don't forget to check out tcadnetwork.com Stop <laughs> by there. check out the podcast 10 minute takes good morning antioch take a look i, I know shame yourself for pushing. no please i mean that's what this is all about you know? Links to all of that will be in the video description below. And the you, two, description. You, you two have sold me completely on both of you because we haven't had a ton of interactions before this. But, I mean, you guys are fantastic. Like, well, thanks, together man. and and, so, <laughs> and as solo acts, you're both, like, extremely personable, fun to talk to. It's And not, not only that, but you get it. Like, not a lot of people understand that you just got to put in some effort <laughs> to, to life. You know, and you can see that you get that. And it's a, that's a, I mean, when, when people ask, like, I wish I knew the secret to life, like, secret to success, it's like, it's not a incredible math formula. It's like, just do some work and <laughs> I continue mean, no, and, yeah. then, and continue <laughs> to do some work, you know, and yeah. then yeah. Get, just allow yourself to get better. Allow yourself time to get better over time. Time takes time and just keep doing it. Right. I work yeah, for a publicist. Respect. I work for publicists and he, you know, he he stresses, you know, you sometimes you you have to be able to work for free and you have to be able to work for long and hard and then eventually you'll work for cheap and then once you've, you know, you've proven your worth, then you can demand what you're worth. Yeah. And what your work is worth. And so that's where, I mean, we, we've done this out of love. We've done this for free. We've done this for cheap. We've done this for, you know, some money and then, you know, no money at times. But it's like we're putting in the seeds and the effort and and, and planting our garden, essentially. Yeah, because um, I've got something right here that says an unplanted seed will never grow. So, like, we got we to gotta stop holding on to all these seeds. Just let them, put them in the ground, see what happens. You guys know. have... I, you guys have gained a new fan for sure. Um, y'all are y'all are fantastic. I, tr I truly I truly mean that. You guys are really awesome. Um, every, the links to everything you've ever done in your entire life will be in the description of this video. <laughs> because damn it, people need to see it. And, and again, I really appreciate the time and oh, let's stay you. in touch. Right? Like yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for hitting us up like for sure my pleasure <laughs> <laughs> no i've been really into watching your interviews so like we're in you it. have yeah i thought nobody watched those things <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. come on now <laughs> i'm glad you, i'm glad you like them I, I really i mean i'm yeah they're they've they're a project of love for sure like 
talk about working for free like hello <laughs> but it's it's the most fulfilled i have ever been in my entire life and, and then and i do th- i do this stuff to make sure i survive financially and i get to do this because i absolutely love it more than anything else it's like i remember being a kid and saying i want to i want to do something one day where i can just sit around and laugh with my friends how do i make that happen <laughs> and, there you go <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. There you you know, go. It's it's all possible. Thanks. Thank you guys again for coming on. Uh cast TCAD podcast, multiple other things. Sheree Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Right? You yeah. Did it? Right. Yes. Donald Chambers. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Much love. Peace and chicken grease. <laughs> y'all, <laughs> y'all be good. <laughs> See you later. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?